What's up everybody? My name is Cal. And today, although it's a bit long overdue because this film's been out for a while, today I am finally reviewing Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Yeah. So this movie takes place several months after the first one. So the first one came out in 2014, so that means several months later, Volume 2. Essentially, Volume 2 is basically four years before Avengers Infinity War, which is quite weird. So that means the Guardians of the Galaxy do not really encounter the Avengers until four years. Which is annoying for some, but I'm pretty sure they are referenced outside of the films. So, this film basically follows off from where we last saw the Guardians, but just several months later. And by this point, the Guardians are well established. They are essentially what I would describe them as the Ghostbusters of the Galaxy, protecting, defending, guarding. Um, the galaxy around doing odd jobs as much so as we see in the beginning of the movie where they are dealing with an obelisk tentacle creature for the sovereign which are who are a high-powered alien race they're quite prestigious and they're very golden in color which is pretty cool and the guard has been assigned to protect these batteries that the obelisk creatures are trying to take and after doing the job rocket doesn't really like the Sovereign race gets his own back on them and takes what they were supposed to be protecting. The Sovereign find out about this, they want to get their revenge and they hunt the Guardians down across the galaxy. And while encountering this, Star-Lord discovers the truth about his father. Because his father is revealed to be... Drumroll... Ego Loving Planet. Not really much of a drumroll. What were the good points of this film? Use of colour. So, Captain America Civil War, parts of Doctor Strange, and several other Marvel films that have happened before Volume 2 have been a bit grey and a bit dull in colour. They've been really good films, but they've not been bright and vibrant, much like you'd expect Marvel to be. But Volume 2 does not disappoint and is entirely colourful throughout. Use of blues and greens and reds it's, and purples and every kind of colour spectrum is in this film at some point which is really nice to see in fact the films that are coming out this year from the mcu thor ragnarok and spider-man homecoming the trailers reveal a lot of color so marvel this year are going really colorful which is cool i like the use of music obviously guys of the galaxy the first one did definitely did have the best musical soundtrack there is and Volume 2, the mixtape for that was brilliant as well. The use of Fleetwood Max, the chain in one particular scene, I believe it was against Star-Lord and Ego fighting each other, and the chain was used in that sequence. It worked really well, as well as other fantastic music. I like the 80s kind of style, the music for one, and you could argue even the colour incorporate this, as well as references to other kind of properties. So the use of space invaders with all of the ships that the Sovereign used to try and shoot down the Milano. The use of um, jumps, hyperspace jumps that Rocket, Rocket Yondu, Baby Groot and one of the Ravagers go through several jumps through the galaxy to get to Ego was quite fun as well and did kind of remind me of sort of, it'd be something that the 80s would have used. And I liked how they used Gallagher kind of references as well. The use of noises as well when they're firing guns at each other and the sounds of the spaceships as well. Very 80s, which is really cool. Finally, another great point about this film was the theme. So I reckon the first Guardians of the Galaxy film was about losing somebody. So Star Lord's case is mother, Drax is family, Gamora, you could argue her whole family, because she loses her sister, her father, everybody really. And this film really deals with father figures. So for example, the Guardians of the Galaxy themselves, I'd say that the father of the Galaxy group would definitely be Drax. The way he behaved in this film, he was kind of cracking jokes and making gags like a father would, which was really funny by the way. And the fact that at the end of the film, when they're attending Yondu's funeral, Baby Groot's all tired and he decides to curl up onto Drax, you know? He gets passed on to Drax, like a father, in a way. 
Also, I reckon that Rocket acts like a father to Baby Groot, which is quite funny because in the first movie, Groot was kind of the parental role over Rocket, and now it's reversed, which is really cool. It, like in the first movie, you had Rocket riding on top of Groot's shoulders, and then in this, Baby Groot is on top of Rocket's shoulder. <laughs> also, obviously, the obvious one is got has got to be Ego, the Living Planet, and Star Lord, obviously. Ego is Starlord's father, but then obviously the surrogate father to Starlord is actually Yondu, who's actually been there. In fact, Yondu makes a great point in the film where he's like to Starlord about Ego, he may have been your father, but he certainly wasn't your daddy. And that's a really good point, because you know, all along it was Yondu that was the father. So I really liked how they used this theme in the film. Characters. I'm just gonna mention my favourite characters. So, Drax has got to be one of them. He, uh, they changed his character so much from the first one. The first one he was quite serious, they didn't really understand Star-Lord in a way, but now he's just making jokes, he's more kind of energetic in a way, and he just laughs at everything, which is so funny. I've got to say, probably one of, the, one of the main reasons why I was laughing at Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 has got to have been from Drax. His humour is bar none fantastic. Then moving on to Rocket. Rocket's kind of, in a way, like the underdog of the group. The one that acts tough, but is deep down the one that's the most afraid, which Yondu actually says to Rocket, which is the case. You kind of feel sorry for Rocket because he's the one that gets abandoned by the group, and he feels like nobody understands him, in a way. So I do respect Rocket a lot, and I can't wait to see him in Infinity War and what he gets up to. It'd be great seeing Stark and Rocket's kind of interaction. And Yondu. Yondu was just great in this movie. It's certainly, as I mentioned before, what he reveals to Peter Cole that, oh, he's not really your father in a way, trying to hint that he's the actual father. Or obviously you gotta not you gotta gotta enjoy the Mary Poppins gag. Ah Mary Poppins, y'all. Absolutely love that gag and I see it practically every day on social media, which is fantastic. Acting overall was brilliant. Ego, played by Kurt Russell, very sinister. You think he's a nice guy, but he's actually a false hero, twists everything around, and he is the reason why Peter Quill's mother is dead. And it's just really sad to find out about that. And you really feel for Star-Lord. Of course, I have to mention Baby Groot as the final character that I'm going to mention. Honestly, the opening sequence was so funny. Just seeing Baby Groot just running around doing his own thing, not even helping the Guardians, was so amazing. It was so cute as well, just dancing to the music and just waving at Gamora while she was trying to take down the obelisk thing, which was really funny. Um, he was He's definitely going to sell a lot in terms of toys and marketing as well. You could just see, you know, how much Baby Groot is just going to sell everywhere. So the bad points of this film, well there aren't many because this film was really good, but I'd have to say it is predictable. So. Volume 2 basically just shows us the, the Guardians of the Galaxy as they are in action. Great stuff, but you know what to expect from them. You know what they're up to, you know who they are, and you kind of anticipate what will happen. But the first movie, there was none of that. You didn't know what was going to happen. You didn't know what to expect from any of the cast. But now you do, which doesn't make the film bad, it just makes it less great. It's not as good as the first movie for that reason alone, but also there's something about the first movie that was just a little bit better in a way. But overall, this second effort is so good that I can't wait for what James Gunn does with Volume 3 and what the Guardians are like in Infinity War. So in conclusion, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 <clears throat> offers the thrills and excitement from the first movie. Maybe not as great because you kind of expect what you expect.
from the Guardians, which is not a bad thing. The characters are fantastic, the acting is perfect. I really liked Yondu, Drax, Rocket, as well as the other cast who performed brilliantly. The use of colour, 80s theme, the music, obviously action sequences of really good Marvel films, CGI and the effects are fantastic and would be brilliant to see in 3D. I would give this film an 8.5 out of 10. The reason being, brilliant effort, fantastic movie, visually beautiful, very funny, would love to see it again, and I will do, but I would have to say, compared to the first movie, it isn't that great, bit predictable, but it's still an enjoyable effort. So, comment below what you thought of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, what did you like, what didn't you like, your favourite parts, your favourite characters. I definitely enjoyed the opening, I definitely enjoyed the battle with Ego and Star-Lord, and obviously the gags that Drax has and Baby Groot, and the post credit scenes, and that Stanley cameo. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys real soon. Bye!